Um, I think the Constitution's current definition of a family is a relic of the past, and I think a lot of people who don't know about it would be so shocked to hear that it's in there. Uh, it doesn't reflect the reality of society today, and it doesn't recognise or protect a huge proportion of families in Ireland. Our Constitution is the fundamental legal document of our state, and it's a living document. As the principles of the Constitution guide our society, our society must also guide our constitution. Marriage does not make a family. It's the relationships, the actions, the love and the care between people that form a family. This referendum has been a long time coming. In 1996, the Constitution Review Group recommended that the definition of the family be reformed to remove the link with marriage. Article 41 has never represented all families in the state but certainly over recent decades, the gap between the constitutional definition and reality has grown wider and wider. There are hundreds of thousands of Irish people in committed relationships with and without children who would be surprised to learn that they aren't recognised as a family simply because they aren't married. All of these families are currently excluded from the protection of Article 41 of the Constitution. Um, now that I think about it, my own included. The current wording should never have made its way into the Constitution in the first place, and it's high time that it was changed. We all know this definition has to change, but as with all referendums to the Constitution, the wording must be well considered and, crucially, must be absolutely clear in its meaning. Um, I was disappointed to see uh, that the Bill and the other referendum with regard to care won't go through pre-legislative scrutiny. Pre-legislative scrutiny was introduced for a reason. It's essential uh, as a step in our legislative process where issues can be teased out at an early stage. Government can set out their rationale and the relevant committee can make recommendations to strengthen the bill before it reaches second stage. Instead, we're at a debate on amendment to our constitution, the first of two debates today, and we don't know the government's rationale for choosing the wording that it's presented to us. With no certainty of the legal ramifications of the wording and to make matters worse the government had initially wanted to limit the second stage debate too before opposition was raised to that at the business committee. That's not good enough. Uh, this is a chance to change the constitution, uh, maybe a short piece of legislation but it arguably has more of a lasting impact on the state than many of the bills that we pass in this house and requires serious scrutiny as a result. Um, Minister, I'd ask you to commit today to ensuring that committee stage will be taken by the sectoral committee with as much time given um, as is needed and that report stage uh, also won't be guillotined. The report of the Joint Committee on Gender Equality presented several options for the wording of this amendment, as did the Citizens' Assembly. All attempted in various ways to expand the definition of the family to include those who were not previously represented, lone parents, unmarried parents, unmarried couples. Can the Minister outline why he has landed on the wording in this bill and why the suggestions presented by the Citizens' Assembly and the Joint Committee were refused? Um, the explanatory memo provided to us gives absolutely no detail on the rationale for the wording chosen or the intended implications of the change to the law and the policy going forward. Uh, we can't do our jobs in this House without that information and certainly we can't be expected uh, to go into committee stage and make amendments without clarity on what is trying to be achieved here with the current wording. Uh, the expansion of the constitutional definition of a family to include those founded, quote, on other durable relationships seems to cover most who were previously offered no protection under the constitution. But to be certain, can the minister confirm on the record that the definition of family being proposed for insertion into the constitution and the term durable relationships is being interpreted as including lone parents and single parent families. What exactly is being defined as a durable relationship under the law? At what point, for example, does a couple in a relationship come under the protection of Article 41? And then what are the implications here for the application of taxation policy, social welfare payments, joint income assessments, succession, family law or mortgages, to name just a few? I'd also ask the Minister how this ties in with the review of equality legislation currently being undertaken by his department. 
Of course, the courts will ultimately decide on their interpretation of the wording and their implications, but it's absolutely essential that the government identify and communicate any changes to law and policy that are expected to come out of this change. <coughs> so that we can better scrutinise this legislation and so that voters know exactly what they'll be voting on next March. Usually we would have that information by now when debating a piece of legislation and I'd like to receive that detail as soon as possible. If people are confused uh, about what they are voting on, government runs a real, real risk of low turnout uh, and a small vote margin, as that, that happened with the children's rights referendum. That referendum did ultimately pass, but was damaged by an almost complete lack of legislative scrutiny and debate. And unfortunately, we've not seen the progress which we would have hoped for on children's rights since then. Ultimately, uh, I think we all want this amendment to result in every family in Ireland, in every shape and size they come in, to feel represented and protected by their constitution. And we want the practical implications of this amendment to be as clear as possible to voters ahead of the referendum debate.